Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to part one of my Thaumcraft 5 mod spotlight. That's right, it's about time we got around to spotlighting Thaumcraft 5, currently available from Minecraft version 1.8.9. Um, so it's the first of the 1.8 mod spotlights. Thaumcraft, of course, a crowd favorite. Many people enjoy this mod. One of my personal favorites as well. And uh, as expected, because it's Thaumcraft 5 and not Thaumcraft 4 point something, it's changed pretty, I don't wanna say a huge amount, but definitely very many things have changed. Some things are obviously gonna be familiar. We're going to get started showing you guys how to do uh, all the things that you need to do to get going with Thaumcraft. As you know, there's typically a Thaumonomicon, which gives you some information on how to play the mod, but we're going to show you how to get started, show you how to do some of the research that you're going to need to do. Research has changed pretty significantly, as has the thermometer, as you can see here. Yeah, there's a little thingy on the left-hand side. What's that all about? We're going to find out soon. Mm, so lots of concepts have changed, but we'll definitely be covering it all. So without further ado, Thaumcraft 5 Mod Spotlight, starting now. All right, guys, to get started in Thaumcraft, you do the same thing that you've done in the past. Build yourself a fancy little iron-capped wooden wand. Those of you who are really familiar with Thaumcraft might notice that the capacity is now 100 instead of the prior 50. Those of you who also notice some things will notice little differences coming up in a second. Um, and then you want to go ahead and use that, boom, to make yourself your very first Thaumonomicon. dun dun dun, dun things are pretty different here. Um, you'll notice that you can zoom in and out in your Thaumonomicon. Uh, you've got four different tabs available over here. We'll be covering a lot of the things in these tabs. More tabs will unlock as you proceed throughout the mod. Um, so there's your Thaumonomicon, there's your wand, and if you hold shift, you'll notice that at the top of the screen there, our wand is already filling up with V. So some of the uh, things that changed are how wands fill and function. Um, those of you who played prior versions of Thaumcraft may remember um, a concept where um, V was stored throughout the chunk rather than specifically only in nodes, and that feature is now back, which is one of the things that you'll notice if you look at the thermometer. You'll see on the left-hand side a visual representation of how much uh, V is currently stored in this chunk. And if I move around to adjacent chunks, you'll see some of those numbers changing a little bit. So things are tweaking and changing and, and fluctuating. Different biomes will, of course, uh, cause you to have different amounts of V. So probably if you go into the nether, you should expect to find a lot of fire V, right? And if you're in like a nice green biome like this one, you'll see a good amount of earth. Also a decent amount of perdicio because I think there's a couple perdicio nodes nearby. Nodes do still exist, and they're what replenish the V in your current chunk. Um, so as our iron-capped wooden wand fills up here, um, by default, once you start with the mod, you need to hold it in your hand in order to charge it. So right now we've got about 25 of everything as we walk around and do stuff. If it's not currently in your hand, you will not um, charge, but there is a research later on that you can unlock that allows it to charge even when not being held. Cool. So wand automatically refills from the V in the current chunk or the atmosphere around you. And the thermometer there gives you a little bit of an indication of uh, you know how much is there. You can also use the thermometer to do a little bit of scanning, but scanning is quite different. You'll notice that as you look at blocks, these little question marks will come up indicating to you that you've not yet scanned this block. And all you really get is a practical knowledge of some of the aspects. This is basically going to unlock certain researches for you. Cool, so I can shift right click on this one so we don't open the UI there. We'll see we got Fabrico from that. Uh, we've got a research table that'll probably unlock Cognito. That's pretty cool. And the Arcane Workbench, nothing can be learned from this. We'll take a look at how to make a research table here in a second. But uh, basically you'll notice simply right clicking. It's no longer a hold and right click and many things don't need to be scanned. So we never scanned any wood or leaves. We never scanned flowers. Uh, we got some stuff out of that, but wooden leaves we didn't need to know much with. So um, no longer are there research points like you used to get in prior versions. So research is quite different as well. Let's take a look at that. So research tables, not terribly different. Uh, let me get myself a new set of scribing tools here just to make things easier on myself. Place down a research, or uh, let's see, it's going to be a table, which is made just like so, so wooden planks and slabs pretty similar to prior versions of Thaumcraft. Uh, right click that with the scribing tools, uh, which are made with feather, glass bottle, and ink. Cool. And uh, you'll get yourself a research table. 
Nice. The other thing you want to do is have an extra set of scribing tools in your inventory and some paper, because as we flip through the Thaumonomicon, we'll find things that we don't know about. There's a lot of good information here, uh, things like the aspects of magic, important to kind of know, um, auras and nodes and how things work, right? So it tells you about aura, it tells you about nodes. You're going to want to flip through this if you're not familiar with some of these concepts, but even if you're really like a master of Thaumcraft 4, go ahead and flip through it because some things have changed. Obviously, the auras and nodes section is probably pretty different um, and then over here we've got the different tabs thaumaturgy alchemy and artifice um, and then there's going to be a couple other tabs that become unlocked as we progress throughout the mod pretty cool stuff um, you'll notice that there's a bunch of things that are grayed out meaning we can't access them yet we need to have some uh, prerequisite research the ones that are blinking are the ones that we can research currently so let's go ahead and uh, give ourselves the ability to research a little bit easier so I'm gonna go ahead and grab the research expertise so what that does is add a research note to your inventory so just clicking on that gives it to you it uses some of the ink and the scribing tools and it uses a sheet of paper we can now place the research notes into this screen. Things look very similar here. However, they're actually pretty, not hugely different, but different in what I consider to be a really good way. Um, no longer do you need to scan things in the environment to get research points. Every research note has a predefined amount of research points that come with it. And you use those research points to connect the tabs in very much the same way we did in Thaumcraft 4. So basically the way this works, for those of you who haven't played Thaumcraft 4, um, there are six primal aspects, Earth, Air, Aqua, Ignis, Ordo, and Perdicio. Those six primal aspects make up all the resulting aspects or compound aspects, okay? And as we flip through here, we can see what those ones are made up of. So we can see fire is a primal aspect, for example, right? And fire and air, or Ignis and air, combine to make Lux. Pretty cool. Uh, Ordo and air combine to make Modus. So what we want to do is connect the dots by um, finding things that Cognito is either makes up or is made up of and connect those through these lines to uh, the adjacent uh, three aspects that are listed on the panel right here. So the best way to demonstrate that is to probably look through it and show you. So Ordo is a primal aspect. We don't need to go through and look up what you know is made up of Ordo, uh, but we can look at Cognito and Census and see what those guys are made up of. So let's look at our aspects of magic and we'll look at Cognito first. That's fire and spirit, okay? So spirit, knowing that that's a compound aspect, is made up of life and death, okay? Victus and mortis. Victus is made up of terra and aqua, those are primals, and Mortis is made up of Aqua and Perdicio. Okay, so in order to get this, we need to link our Spiritus to our Cognito first. So let's do that. So let's make a Spiritus aspect. As we saw, Spiritus is a combination of Victus and Mortis. So we need to make Victus with Terra and Aqua, and we have to make Mortis with Perdicio and Aqua. So let's do that. Click on Aqua, click on Perdicio and we're gonna make ourselves a mortis aspect, okay? I'll make two of them. And then we'll do the same with Terra and Aqua. We'll make a couple Victuses. Now we can combine Victus and Mortis to make Spiritus, cool? Very straightforward. So we've made Spiritus, okay? Let's see what we can do with Spiritus. Spiritus uh, is made up of Victus and Mortis, obviously, so we're gonna to wanna to go and make probably another, let's make a mortis. So let's do these guys to make mortis. So because mortis makes up spiritus, these lines connect, right? And the same here. If we were to throw something in here that didn't connect, it wouldn't uh, show the line. So see how it's grayed out and there's no line between them? So now we have to get over to ordo. So we need something that mortis has um, that's similar to ordo or can connect to ordo. So Mortis is made up of Aqua and Perdicio, and I happen to remember from prior versions of Thongcraft that Permutatio is uh, Perdicio and Ordo. So let's take Perdicio here, and then we're gonna combine Ordo and Perdito and get ourselves Permutatio, and now we've connected this line, right? So um, Perdicio, is used to make Mortis, Mortis is used to make Spiritus, Spiritus is used to make Cognito, and Permutatio is made up of Perdicio and Ordo, so we've got those connections. 
pretty cool. So very similar if you've uh, done prior Thaumcraft research. Those of you who haven't done Thaumcraft research in the past, trust me, it sounds confusing, but it's actually really, you'll get the hang of it very quickly once you go through it a little bit. And we're about to unlock a research that makes it even easier. So census is made up of air and spiritus. That makes things a little bit easier because we've already got spiritus here. Cool. So let's do air and spiritus. We'll combine these guys. We'll put a census here, right? Because air and spiritus, right, makes census. And then we can put air in between these two. And now we've finalized it. So we've connected the three nodes that were already there: the ordo, the cognito, the brain, and the and the owl one. And those three are connected now through the interlocking systems. And we'll take out this discovery research here and open it up. Hooray, we've just unlocked research expertise, which gives us a couple things. Number one, it gives us a 25% chance that if we remove an aspect from a hex, so if we made a mistake, uh, we might get that aspect back, okay? Um, you're also able to see what aspects you need to combine to create an aspect you're hovering over. That makes life a lot easier. Um, and lastly, you can consume a knowledge fragment to add a point to each primal. So let's go ahead and go for research mastery. Okay, when I go ahead and place this research note, we've got a new set of primal aspects. So every time you do a research, you just get a new set of primal aspects and you have to build out the aspects um, to connect the lines, right? And you'll also now notice that because of our research mastery, when we hover over stuff, we can easily see. All right, so we're gonna wanna connect these guys with fire, right? So let's combine a couple potentias. We'll put fire, potentia, Fire. Boom, we've just connected these. A lot easier now so that when you mouse over complex aspects, you can see what they're made of, right? Census is spirit and air. Well, I happen to remember that fire plus air makes some lux. Cool, so let's do that. Lux to air, lux to air, right? Because census has air in it, lux has air in it, so we can connect those dots. Very cool. Okay, uh, let's see if Ordo and Air make up anything. I don't know that they do, but we'll find out. Boom. Oh, it does. Modus. Cool. Well, now that I figured that out, I can just put some Modus here, um, put another Air here, and another Modus here, and boom, we've just completed another research. So trust me when I say A, um, go ahead and get your research expertise very quickly, um, and that'll make things a lot easier for you because you'll be able to very quickly see. Uh-oh, Eldritch Epiphany. Looks like I've got flux or some uh, some 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 warp. So warp is back, by the way, um, but that's okay. We'll uh, be talking about warp. It's very similar to how it worked in prior versions. But now we've unlocked research mastery. Very cool. So that's how you do research in Thaumcraft 5. In my opinion, it's a little bit easier because you don't have to run around and worry about having the right number of aspects and building aspects and having. That was kind of uh, it. Got a little bit tedious after a while in Thaumcraft 4. So in Thaumcraft 5, just Every time you have a re new research note, they give you a chunk of primals and say, this is what you have to work with. Now, if you happen to run out of primals, right, you can either use a knowledge fragment to give yourself a little bit more, or you can just, you know, trash the existing research note and make a new one. And it's kind of like starting over. So that is pretty cool. So another good research to get next will be advanced aura tapping. This is a pretty uh, useful note. So let's go ahead and do it real fast. There we go. Done and done. Uh, so this research is very useful. Um, it's going to make it so that um, it doubles the speed at which your wand can draw and be from the environment. And it also allows you to do it um, while the wand is not in your hand, but merely in your hot bar. So previously it uh, had to be in your hand, but now you can see just being in the hot bar, it's filling up. Nice. That is cool. And it's also running faster. You'll notice it's twice as fast. So you're getting two every tick instead of just one, which you did before. And if you go ahead and uh, research the next line of this, which is Master Aura Tapping, you'll quickly discover that this allows your wand to recharge even faster. Uh, it triples it. So you'll get three every tick instead of just one. Nice. 64s, 67s, etc., etc. Very cool, right? So that is pretty neat. So I just went ahead and uh, used a little in-game admin command to give myself all the research so that we don't have to continue doing research in order to show you the rest of the mod. Uh, so let's move on to some more advanced stuff um, and also check out some of the cool gadgets.
So one of the things I want to show you guys is there's definitely some uh, wands that are probably familiar with and a new focus. So let's show a couple of the wand foci, shall we? Uh, wand foci can be added to a wand, and I'm going to snag just a few of these just to show you some of the neat stuff you can do. So hold F with your wand to show you uh, what's up. Wand of equal trade absolutely has returned. So uh, shift right click to set the type of block and the wand of equal trade when you right click on a block will replace a bunch of blocks in an area with uh, the ones in your inventory. You'll notice that it pretty quickly drains earth and pay attention to my earth V right now. Um, notice how earth filled up uh, before the rest did. So what happens is the wand tries to stay balanced, so it'll fill up one aspect and then continue filling the rest. Pretty cool, right? Um, another neat one, obviously, Wand of Excavation, allows you to mine. And you'll notice that we're very quickly using up uh, some of the, the, the V in our wand here, but that's okay. We'll be a little bit more efficient once we get better wands going on. Um, the Wand of Fire is still here, does damage to mobs. Uh, the Wand of Shock as well. And one of my new personal favorites, the Grappler Wand. So, funny story, Azanor was actually watching my Fortress Craft Evolved Let's Play, and he did enjoy the grappling hook, and he probably heard me say something like, I wish somebody would implement this in, in Minecraft, because he definitely did. Nice. Let's see, let's try over here. There we go. Very cool. So the grappling hook actually works surprisingly well. Um, it does a really good job of grappling throughout the environment and uh, makes for a very cool traveling mechanic in Minecraft, if I do say so myself. Um, I've played with this thing extensively already and it is just too cool. Um, I definitely enjoy playing with it. Definitely recommend you guys checking it out as well. The Focal Manipulator, of course, also makes a comeback, and uh, you'll notice here that you can uh, go ahead and add some upgrades to your wands as well. We'll see a little bit more how to use this in a moment. So to apply these upgrades, you simply uh, click on the potency, for example, and it's going to tell you the V cost, which it's going to automatically draw from the environment. So if we look here, we'll see how much V is in the environment. And if we go ahead and apply this, it's going to use a little bit of your experience and start drawing from the environment. And we'll see here um, the V. So we quickly drained out a lot of V uh, from the environment. That's OK. Um, that V will be replenished by adjacent chunks. So nearby chunks will help to replenish the V in one chunk. So you'll see here we are a chunk over. There's still some water in here. It's going to help to uh, replenish and refill this chunk. So we got a little bit more water back in here and it's kind of refilling itself. Cool, very neat. So that's the focal manipulator, pretty straightforward to use. And of course, there's a couple other upgrades that you can apply here that are pretty fun. You're of course going to want to upgrade your wand so that you don't just stick with the basic wooden one with iron caps. Um, different caps are available as you proceed, gold, brass, and thomium. Uh, and the better the caps, um, pretty much the more efficient your wand's going to be. Um, it's very, very useful to have better wands. Okay, so uh, the caps will make um, less V use, and then you can also have better cores. So instead of just regular old wood, you might want to use a great wood wand core, which you can get from the great wood logs that spawn in the world. These give your wand more storage. So a great wood wand core can store 250 V of each type. Silver wood wand core can store up to 500. Um, and then you can also get yourself some uh, staves and scepters. Um, scepters are, are specialized for crafting. So when you get to the point that you want to do some arcane crafting, which we'll see in a moment, you're going to want to go ahead and uh, use those. And then staves are very useful for um, basically storing V and using the uh, foci. So pretty cool stuff. And then there's some elemental uh, wand cores that basically um, auto refill some stuff um, based on the different types of elements that there are. So there's fire and earth and all that kind of good stuff. So let's take a look at making a great wood wand core because it's going to be pretty useful for us. So we're going to need two great wood logs, but they don't go into a regular workbench. Uh, just like in prior versions of Thongcraft, they need to go into an arcane workbench. So you'll notice, uh, those of you who are not familiar with Thongcraft, that doesn't work. You're going to need to get yourself an arcane workbench, which is pretty easy to make. Um, all you need to do is get one of those tables. 
that we saw earlier, the same thing that we used to make the research table, and right click it with a wand. Boom, and it converts to an Arcane Workbench. The wand is gonna sit in this slot. You can also take it out whenever you want, uh, but it sits up there and it's used to do the crafting. It's gonna draw V out of the wand to assist with the cra uh, crafting of things. Now you don't need to have a wand focus in there. I'll even remove that just to demonstrate. And there we go, great wood rod. You'll notice that it requires 26 prodicio, 26.4. So we can craft the great wood wand and you'll notice that the iron capped wand now has used up some of that prodicio. Let's go ahead and get some golden caps to assist with creating a better wand. Boom and boom, nice. Um, so you'll notice it uses 59 of each. And if we ever um, didn't have enough stored in there, so for example, if we got ourselves another great wood rod and some golden caps, it would not allow us to craft until we uh, recharged that wand. Insufficient V. So we'd have to recharge this by holding it in our inventory and letting the aura recharge the wand for us. Nice. Uh, one of the things you can craft, by the way, is a recharge pedestal. This allows you to place a wand inside the recharge pedestal and it will go ahead and recharge from the environment as well. So you'll see um, the environment's uh, fluctuating a little bit and we're draining out some V to recharge the wand. And then if I pick this wand back up, we'll see it's got more than it did a moment ago. Very cool. And then as a final option for automated recharging, um, you can go ahead and craft yourselves this guy, the Arcane Workbench Charger. Uh, what that's going to do is allow you to automatically recharge any wands inside an Arcane Workbench in much the same way. So you'll see that it's quickly filling up. Cool. So this is a nice thing to have on your Arcane Workbench because then you won't have to constantly remove your wand and put a new one in. Um, in addition to having more uh, or less V cost when you have better wands, you'll notice that this uses about 59.4 of each aspect. Once we put some upgraded wands in there, um, it's gonna go ahead and use 54, so it's less, right? So this wand just needs to be recharged by the environment, and oh look, it recharges at five at a tick, so that's actually a lot quicker than uh, holding it in your hand, it looks like, sweet. So moving past the Thaumaturgy tab, which we'll come back to later because we haven't checked out this section too much yet, we're going to look at alchemy because that's another bit of basics that you're going to want to know about. Uh, alchemy comes back in a very similar fashion until we get to uh, the point where we're going to distill Essentia. That's a little bit different, but not terribly so. Um, so basic alchemy allows you to use a crucible to do some other crafting. So there's several mechanics to craft in Thaumcraft. One of them is the arcane workbench, which we use a wand to help infuse magic into our magical stuff. The other is the crucible. Simply craft a vanilla Minecraft cauldron, right click it with a wand, and you get a crucible. Nice. Uh, you can go ahead and then fill that up with some water. Cool. And you're going to want to go ahead and light a fire underneath that guy. So get yourself some netherrack and a flint and steel. Cool. And after a few seconds, the water inside the crucible will start to bubble and boil, and you'll know it's ready to work. Hooray! Many objects will be crafted with the crucible, and knowing how to do so is pretty important. Those of you who've played previous versions of Thaumcraft, this will be very familiar to you, because it's pretty much unchanged. Um, every item in the world is made up of basic components and basic aspects. So if we looked at, for example, coal and we held shift over it, we'd see that it has two potentia and two ignis. So every item in the world has some of that. Torches, for example, <coughs> have some lux on them. Okay, so they're made up of light. And then we're also gonna want some glowstone for this demonstration. Cool. So if we look in our crucible, we'll see one of the items we can craft using the crucible is an object called nitor, which is now dyeable, by the way. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but to craft it, we're going to need three ignis, three lux, and three potentia inside of a crucible. All you have to do is drop items in that are made up of that those aspects and you'll be able to uh, have them in there. So we have two of each of these aspects in coal. So we're gonna want two sets of these, so we'll have four in total. And then we're gonna need three torches, okay? So that'll give us the three lux that we need. And uh, then finally, as a catalyst to this equation, we need to drop in a piece of glowstone dust after the fact. So get the aspects in there. Once the crucible has the right amount of aspects, drop in the catalyst item, which in this case is glowstone, and you'll get some night ore. Let's give it a shot. So simply drop in coal and the torches and then your glowstone, and boom, it crafted for you some yellow night ore. Nice. Night ore is used as a light source and it does a really good job. 
Ta-da! And uh, as mentioned, you can dye it simply by combining it in a crafting window. Sweet. That is cool. So a really nice light source. One of the other nice features of it is you can also use it uh, in place of fire underneath a crucible. Hooray! And it puts out a decent amount of light. One of the things you're going to want to craft pretty soon, though, is uh, a pair of goggles of revealing. And as you can see, it's an arcane workbench recipe as shown, pretty similar to previous versions. Uh, go ahead and equip those, and it'll allow you to see inside of a cauldron um, what aspects are currently floating around in there. So it'll make it a lot easier for you to keep track of what aspects are sitting in there. Now, if you don't use the aspects that are stored in a cauldron after a while, uh, they will break down and eventually leak out into the environment by way of flux. And you can see it in the uh, little bottom left of that hotbar, there's a little bit of purple. So that is uh, some negative effects floating around in there. And you'll see them kind of puffing out as purple smoke. See it going there? Yeah, goodbye purple smoke. Um, that's some bad stuff that you really kind of want to avoid in your environment. One other uh, feature of the thermometer, by the way, go ahead and uh, hit F and it'll let you focus on a specific um, level in the environment. So you can see just air, just fire, aqua, earth, ordo, perdicio, and how much vitium or um, flux there is. So if you get too much um, of the, the taint in an environment, that's gonna be bad. So you wanna avoid that. Um, so uh, basically what happens is flux released in the environment by uncareful use of magic will eventually really corrupt the V environment and you'll start to see either some purple lightning strikes or maybe even some tainted goo raining down from the sky and that will turn your biome into a taint biome and that's bad. So trust me, be a little bit careful with your magic but there will be ways to solve that going off in the future. Uh, the other side effect, by the way, of wearing the goggles of revealing is the ability to check out uh, these aura nodes. Nice. So these aura nodes are what help to replenish um, the V in a biome. So basically the aura nodes will only replenish um, the aspect that they're indicated of. So you'll notice that this biome that I'm in currently has a lot of Perdicio. That's because the aura node that's replenishing Perdicio happens to be here. There will be other aura nodes and other adjacent chunks doing things like Terra and Aqua and Ignis and Air and all that good stuff. Uh, so you'd want to find those as you can. But remember that um, you know adjacent chunks will share their, uh, they'll try and help balance out the levels. So Basically, um, you know, when we use up Terra in this chunk, for example, it's going to um, get Terra from adjacent chunks to refill it. Cool. So that is how uh, aura nodes work for now. You can do some other more advanced stuff with aura nodes that we'll probably get to in a later spotlight. So one of the side effects of V in the environment here are these guys, crystals. Um, so large amounts of V will um, pretty much focus in uh, and become crystallized and become part of world gen. Um, you'll notice that there's information here that tells you that there's really no good way to uh, harvest these guys. You just have to break them and you'll get some ore crystals. However, uh, once you've become really well versed in thaumaturgy, you'll be able to unlock this crystal farmer uh, research node, which gives you a couple things. First off, um, you can go ahead and make plantable V crystals. Secondly, you can go ahead and steal one single shard from a crystal growth without having to break it. Nice. Uh, so simply right click it with your wand and let's give this a try. Oh, cool. That is neat. I got it. Um, there we go. Got one. Cool. So you'll be able to, uh, you know, harvest these guys and do good stuff with them. Let's go back over to our base and uh, see what we can do with this thing. So Arcane Infusion is back, and we're going to take a look at that in the next segment. But it's what's used. It's another crafting mechanic that we're going to uh, use to create these crystals, which we can, like I mentioned, plant on the ground, and they'll eventually grow, and we can harvest them with our wands. So we can build our own crystal farms, which is pretty cool. The other thing that these crystals do is act almost like little batteries. Um, so as um, you know, certain aspects in the environment uh, grow and expand, these things will um, grow and and store that um, extra V in the aura in a battery kind of form. So by having a lot of these in a chunk, you'll basically have um, some pretty cool stuff. Nice, right? Um, so let's do crystals here. Let's get the entropy crystal. Cool. 
and uh, he'll be able to absorb some of that and use the, the V and the aura to grow, and then we can harvest more crystals and stuff like that. Pretty cool. Um, so we'll talk some more about the aura and some V in part two of the Mod Spotlight for Thongcraft. We're going to wrap up part one here. We'll come back next time and take a look at infusion crafting. Like I mentioned, some things have changed uh, with regards to the way um, Essentia Distillation works, and uh, some of the things have changed with regards to... Uh, I think infusion crafting is pretty similar, but we'll get a, a feel for how that works next episode. And there's lots of other cool stuff. One thing I will mention, though, before we wrap up the spotlight... Golems have changed significantly. Golems are very, very, very different from what they used to be. Um, and in my opinion, they are way cooler. And I can't wait to show you that. So we'll probably cover golems as well next episode. So next episode, we'll cover infusion. We'll cover golems. We'll take a look at some other cool nifty gadgets. And we'll see if a part three is necessary. For now, Direwolf20 signing off on part one of the Thomcraft 5 Spotlight. Hope you guys enjoyed checking it out. Take it easy. <laughs>